Sorry, Pastor, I had to take my coat off. I was starting to get warm. About five years ago, I had a small stroke because it got overheated and, and so forth. And ever since then, when I start getting hot, I have to try and cool down a little bit. And the coat coming off kind of helps with that. But I'm going to get you all fired up. Take your Bibles, open up Luke chapter number five. We'll be here for another two hours. Amen. Let's get going. I already had some people go, huh? No, I, I, I've got my tennis shoes on, amen. I left Japan. I, we were supposed to come back last year and get an opportunity to come back because of COVID. And my shoes have worn out. And in Japan, I can't find shoes, amen. For some reason, they don't have size 14 over there. You know, when I look for clothes, they tell me to go to the sumo shop because they, they don't have clothes in the regular stores for me. So... When we come back here, that's when we stock up, and I, have, I, I haven't even been able to find shoes that fit me here yet, so I'm still running around in my tennis shoes, So, but uh, God is good, and he's got a pair of shoes out there for me. So take your Bibles, Luke chapter number 5, and begin reading verse number 30. The Bible says, but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering, he said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the, right, call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here. And you got us safely back to the, the church. And, and uh, it's exciting to see the faces that are here. Now, Father, open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive the seed of thy word tonight. Help me to preach this message that you've laid on my heart. And Mother, just allow it to be an encouragement, but also a challenge to each and every one that's here, as it was to me as it put together. And Father, just help now. Give strength, for you are the great physician. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Now, who here likes being sick? For some reason, nobody likes being sick. I remember as a child, I liked being sick because mom would bring me chicken noodle soup. We had Campbell's. We uh. were living high, amen. Uh. And Campbell's chicken noodle soup with the crackers in there. It was just wonderful, you know. But, but sometimes you fake being sick because you wanted that stuff. And, and I got thinking about, uh, as I was going to be coming back to the States. I had to some medical exams I need to do and so forth. And so I, the Lord was kind of gave me a little message uh, about a trip to the doctor's office because each and every one of us have to have a checkup from time to time. And every, every Sunday and every day through the week, we should have a checkup in the word of God, amen. Yeah. So let's take a trip to the doctor's office uh -huh. because the great physician Jesus He's the one wanting to do and give you your physical. Amen. Now, I came, when we flew in, I came and drove from Virginia. When we got to Richmond, we had to send a picture to Ms. Monica to let her know that we were thinking of her when we saw the Richmond sign. But when I drove from Virginia all the way to Springfield on an expired driver's license. Now, I had it all planned. If I got stopped, Miss Lisa made sure I drove good. She kept going, you're going too fast. You're going too fast. Slow it down. You know, I, I didn't want to get caught doing anything because I had my expired driver's license, but I would give them my Japanese driver's license and make them go, okay. It's a valid Japanese license. I guess you're okay. Go, go, go. So try and get on tickets that way. But God was good and I was good. I didn't get any tickets. But when I got back here, I had to have a DOT physical. I have a CDL license. And to keep that CDL license, I had to have a DOT physical. So I went to the doctor, uh, a doctor here in Springfield. I had an appointment, and he gave me a physical. Now, when you go for a physical, they check your heart. Amen. He put that stethoscope on me, and he listened to my heart. He listened to my lungs. Take a breath to see if everything's working right. Jeremiah chapter number 17, begin verse number 9. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. 
God knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. And he knows if you have a hard heart. Hebrews, or er, yeah, Psalm 95, verse number 8. Psalm 95, verse number 8. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty year long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my way. Yeah. How is your heart today? Has your heart gotten hard because, because things that are going on in our lives, things going on in the world, get our eyes and our minds focused on the things of the world instead of the things of God? Are we being hardened in our hearts because things aren't going the way we think they ought to go? Man. Our heart can be fixed, amen. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 33 or 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the, the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. Yeah. You know, though, when I got saved November 11th of 1990, I, I, I was a good person. But yet my heart was still hard to the things of God. But once he saved me, amen, once I accepted him as my personal Savior, my heart got softened up, amen. Yeah. I became more compassionate towards people. Yeah. He gave me a heart and a desire. Why? Because he gave me his heart. Yeah. When I got saved, the Holy Spirit came and lived and dwelt within me, amen. Yeah. He fixed my heart. He got fixed by the blood of the Lamb, amen. He got fixed... Because I accepted Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I love verse number 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Japan it is hard to witness to people, especially when you don't speak the language. But handing out the tracts, we would say Yonde Kudasai, which means read please. And before COVID, people would take it. They would, they would take it uh, uh, around Christmas time this last year. Uh, even though COVID was going on, we took it. We have a junior high just not far from the, from the church. And I have junior high school girls would come and stand at the street corner. We're actually at a stoplight. And a crosswalk is where our building is. So it's a good intersection there. And the girls would come across the street and stand in front of our church building and talk. You know how girls talk. Huh. Especially teenage girls. It doesn't matter what country you're in. They all stand there. They blah, 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 huh. and just talk away. And it was a Friday and I was unloading Costco bread into the church. And I'm going around the girls with all this bread and up into the church and then come back down. I normally... Uh, I have one of those Apple Watch things that counts my floors. I'll do 30 floors average on a Friday. Wow. Up and down steps, in and out of the church with the food and, and so forth. But I, I, I grabbed a, we have a special Japanese um, gospel track publication. It's in a comic form. The Japanese love comic type things. And it talks about the greatest gift and I came out with a book for each of them and also a track for each of them about Christ and Christmas, all in Japanese. And when I was done, I was up looking down on the street towards them and they were all standing there with it open. They were looking, letting the word of God seep into their hearts, amen. Yeah. That's why we're here, amen. Right. To try and get the Word of God into the soil of the heart. Amen. And Christ can fix the heart if you will let Him fix your heart. Amen. Yes. And when our heart is fixed, we can see God more clearly now. John, uh, Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When we see Him as He is, we can praise Him. Amen. Psalm 108, verse number 1. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. 
Have you been praising God? Good. You know, it's hard to praise God when you got a foul heart. Yeah. When you have a hard heart. When, when we get a hard heart, what do we do? We fuss and complain about everything. That's right. They're a person. Yeah. They took and they parked in my parking spot. Oh. Don't they know I park here every day? It's kind of like people going to church. You're sitting in my pew. Oh. In our church, I have visitors come and they'll say, can we sit anywhere? I said, if they're not sitting there, you can sit there. We don't have names on seats. Amen. Amen. God's house is open to all to come. It is. All to hear the word of God. Amen. We need to always remember that God, the great physician, wants to check up on your heart. Is your heart hard? Or is your heart soft and pliable and willing to listen to the call of God? He says, I need you to go do something. Yeah. You need to be a witness. You need to have compassion on people. The great physician not only will check your heart, but he will check your eyes. When I uh, went to the doctor there, of course, he has an eye chart. He had me stand in the hallway and look down at the eye chart. And I looked at the eye chart and I read the line. And then he said, cover your left eye and read the line. And I covered my left eye and I said, well, I can't quite see that one. And a couple up, I read that one. He said, well, that, that's okay. And then cover up your right eye. And I covered up my right eye just like I'm doing now. And I'm looking out and I'm going, you know, I really need to get my glasses changed. He says, well, what line can you read? Um, none. Oh. The, I think I know what the first line is. You know, I'm, I, I, I really need to get my glasses changed. And he says, well, both eyes are working, so you're okay. Wow. They work good together. I can see. I, I can see fine together. Just and I, I told him I'm getting my uh, an eye exam while I'm back. And get some new glasses and so forth. So, so he he passed me. But how's your eyesight, Amen? How's your eyesight? Romans chapter number three. Romans chapter number three, begin verse number ten. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. And the poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet is, are swift to shed innocent blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Yeah. And the way of peace have they not known. Mm -hmm. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's right. They're not seeing God. They have no fear of God. We live in a society that does not fear God. Right. They can tell that because they don't they, they have no regard for life these days. Amen. So why do people not see what you and I can see? Well, they don't see it because the devil's blinded their eyes. Second Corinthians 4 4, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 11. 1 John 2, 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. Yes. I have glasses. If I take them off, some of you look better. <laughs> jet lag, jet lag. <laughs> Do you see... What God sees. Man. Or are you letting the things of the world be seen through your eyes? Mm -hmm. We need to be seeing what God wants us to see, amen, instead of what our flesh wants to see. Yeah. What, what are your eyes looking at? What are your eyes watching, amen? Do you have eyes but you see not? Math, Mark chapter number 8, verse number 18. Having eyes you see not, having ears you hear not. And do ye not remember? Mm -hmm. John 12, 40. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts and be converted. And I should heal them. Yeah. Their eyes need to be opened, amen. 
And how do people's eyes get opened? By the Word of God. Amen. Letting them see you living the Word of God. Yeah. Now that's getting personal, preacher. You're meddling. I like to meddle, amen. <laughs> Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Uh -huh. You get upset, get upset with the word of God. Uh -huh. Remember, the Bible tells us that our eyes need to be opened. We need to turn from darkness to light. Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Luke 24, 31. Luke 24, 31 says, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Those were the men on the road to the maze. Yes. They were walking down, just kind of down the mully grubs, because Jesus, he's been crucified. He's buried. Oh, we were expecting him to take everything over and just... All our plans are destroyed. And Jesus, he starts walking with them and talking with them. In verse number 32, and he said, and they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Jesus talked to them and, and started sharing the scriptures from Moses up until his resurrection. He shared with them all the words of the prophets. You know, when we hear the word of God, is our heart burning? Do we have heartburn for God, amen? Some of us get heartburn when we eat barbecue, amen? Yeah. But we need to have spiritual heartburn for God. Yeah. And these people, these, these men, and Jesus, he had taken, they, they, they stopped and they, they were going to stop for the night and they bid the stranger that they didn't know it was Jesus yet to to come eat with them and stay with them. And he sat down when he broke the bread and asked the blessing. Their eyes were opened and they saw him for who he was. When we hear the scripture, when we get into the word of God, our hearts begin to burn. Our eyes are opened yeah. to see what God has for us to do. He opens up our understanding, amen. Amen. Psalm 119, 18, Psalm 119, verse 18. Open thou that mine eyes, that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Right. John 14, 26 says, <clears throat> But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. When we get saved, the Holy Ghost comes in. He will teach us. Yes. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, it's, and I'm always going to be honest with you. Ladies, don't ask me what, you, what I think about your, what you're wearing. <laughs> my wife tells me all my taste is in my mouth. Okay, so. <laughs> but I'll be honest and say, that's very nice. <laughs> because whatever you wear is nice, amen. Uh, that's political, isn't it, preacher? It is. Okay, <laughs> jet lag. Back to where I'm at. We need to always remember that our understanding comes by the Word of God. Yes. I have to trust the Lord that the men that I've turned the church over to back in Japan that are going to be preaching for me, just men out of the church that have heard the preaching for several years and, and grown, that they will preach the Word of God. Yes. The Holy Spirit that's in me is the same Holy Spirit that's in them. I had somebody ask me one day, he says, but but how do I get as much Holy Spirit as you have? I said, you already have it. You're just not using it. Amen. That's good. You know, the Holy Spirit that I have is the same Holy Spirit you have because it, came, it comes from the same God. Amen. Yeah, right. The same power, the same strength. But it's all up to you how much you're going to use. Yes. Are you going to allow the, the sin of the world, the filth of the world, to, to dirty the vessels to which we have, to allow the Holy Spirit not to be able to shine the light through you? Yeah. Or are you going to get cleaned up by the Word? Are we going to allow our eyes to see what God has for us? Open up our eyes to that invisible God that's out there and see Him and Christ for who they are. The great physician not only checks our heart, not only checks our eyes, 
but he checks our ears. That's right. They want to make sure that you can hear <coughs> train whistles. Make sure you're not deaf driving. But how many of us are deaf to the Word of God? The world is deaf to the Word of God. Ah. Jeremiah 5.21. Jeremiah 5.21 says, Hear now this, O foolish people, without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Now, I'm going to be... I'm going to say this. All wise preachers believe that men have selective hearing. Okay. Yeah. I, I see all the heads shaking. Shake What's selective hearing? You can hear somebody speaking two rooms away, but you can't hear your wife speak at you or you're just standing over here. Well, that's easy to understand. If I'm facing this way, I can hear what's there. If she's behind me, I can't hear what's there. <laughs> She's shaking her head at me. I'm in trouble tonight, I know. <laughs> Jeremiah 7, 24 says, but, but they hearkened not, nor inclined their ears, but walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Yes. Israel was constantly going backwards because they were walking in their own evil hearts instead of following the precepts of God. Yes. If you want to take and have victory in your life, if you want to take and, and see the power of God, you need to open your ears and open your eyes and open your heart, amen, amen. and let God have his way through you, amen. Your ears need to, to be open to the truth and not turned away from it. 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 3. 2 Timothy 4, 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's here. People today just don't want the truth. That's right. But after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Amen. We have people come visit the church. Most, you know, a lot of the Americans that will come visit the church, many of them don't, don't stay. They'll come for one service. And then they say, well, what programs do you have? Yeah. I said, we don't, have a, we don't have a lot of programs. We have preaching. Yeah. Well, your music isn't that exciting. I said, the music isn't the focus. Man. The preaching is the focus. Man. People are hungry. There are people hungry that are looking for truth. They are. And those that are looking for truth will find it at Lighthouse Baptist in Yamato, Shu, Japan. Yeah. They'll find it at Grace Bible Baptist here in Springfield. You want the truth. The ears need to be open for the truth. Amen. You ever seen children? You start telling them something that they don't want to hear. They go like this. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. But you know what? They can still hear it, even with their hands open. Mm -hmm. First church I pastored, I had a gentleman. He was an elderly gentleman. He sat up at the front. And in the first uh, service I preached there, he was up at the front. That evening, he was about halfway back. By the end of the month, he was in the back row. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, why did you keep moving towards the back? He said, because I kept turning down my hearing aid and I could still hear you even when I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people... They, they go through the motions. They go through what is expected, but they're not listening. Amen. And we do the same thing with God. He has blessings. He has wisdom. He has truth for us. But when it goes against what we want, we don't want to listen to it. We need to check our hearing and make sure that we're listening Amen. to what the Word of God has to say. We need to listen to what God's word says to us, amen. We also not only need to go to the great physician and have him check our heart, check our eyes, check our ears, but we also need to have our walk checked. Yeah. You know, the doctor is supposed to check range of motion to make sure that my arms and, and I, can, I can walk in it. it also that I can stand properly and, and so forth. Uh, I don't have any 
muscle or hip issues and so forth. As a CDL truck driver, you're supposed to be in, in good shape that way. And, and I am. I, I'm a proper physique. Huh. I'm a preacher on the level because my bubble's in the middle. Yeah. She's shaking her head at me again. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 5, begin verse number 15. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. We are to walk. Your walk says a lot about you, amen. Are we walking uprightly in the service of God? Or are we walking defeated? You know what defeated people look like? Yeah. Oh, just another day. Oh. You know, Eeyore, we have a lot of Eeyore Christians. Yes, we have troubles. Yes, we have difficulties. Yes, there are problems. People can back out in front of you, amen. Huh. amen. And then blame it on you. When I heard that, uh, what happened to y'all, it reminded me when I was in Texas. Now, we had a big shuttle bus. Pastor remembers the shuttle bus we used to have when we had the whole family pulling a 40-foot travel trailer. And I was down in Texas. We were in Garland, Texas, near a Walmart. And there's five lanes. And I have to get over to the inside lane to to make a left-hand turn up ahead. So I've got my blinkers on. I'm moving over. Now, I had moved over into that far outside lane, and that's where the entrance to the Walmart people come out. Now, the back end of my camper is 60 feet from the front of my bus. And this vehicle stuck its nose out there, and the back of my camper took off the front of its car. I went down, I, I told Lisa, I said, we just took off the front of the car. You know, you know, that car pulled out, and I was already there. Well, the police took their account of, I hit them. Mm. The officer that came and got, got me, I, he said, did, did you hit them? I said, well, I did take the front of their car off. I saw it in the mirror, I, what happened, but... They pulled out, I was already in the lane. Well, the police report said that I admitted to hitting them. Uh -huh. Praise Jesus anyhow. Uh -huh. But you know what? God's in control of all things. I could have let that get me discouraged. But I didn't. I let God work through all things. Amen. Uh -huh. We need to walk in a way not to be down in the mully grubs, but to keep our head high and remember that we have a God that's in control. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. The Bible says, verse number 2, We're in a time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince, the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past and lust of the flesh. Fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind who were by nature the children of wrath. That's what we were. I love verse number four. But God, Amen. who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Amen and hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I'm so glad I, I serve a God that was willing to save a wretched soul like me. Yeah. I didn't deserve it, and neither do you. Right. But it's by the grace of God he saved you. Amen. Psalm 37, verse 23, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. So are you walking in his way? Mm -hmm. Are your steps being ordered by him? Are you allowing his, his word to be a lamp under your feet and a light under your path? Or are you letting the world decide how you walk and where you go? Wow. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in grace in your hearts to the Lord. Yeah. 
You want to have blessings? You want to have joy in your life? Let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Joshua, in Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen! He says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You can take that to the bank. You want to walk with God. You want to be like Enoch, amen? Yeah. Enoch walked with God and God took him. Mm. He says, come up here and let's walk up here for a few days. Mm. Remember a day with the Lord is just a thousand years. Yeah. A thousand years is a day. But how's your walk? Do people see you walking Enjoy, or do they see you fussing and moaning and belly aching about how things just aren't the way you think they ought to be? Mm -hmm. I could have got greatly discouraged with COVID because of people not being able to come to church. But I lived through an earthquake and a tsunami and a nuclear meltdown right. that took our church from 70 to 7 in just a matter of a couple of weeks. Yeah. I wound up losing the, the nice building that we had because we couldn't afford to keep it anymore. You know, I've had, I had some preachers tell me, why don't you just quit and come back to the States? Yeah. You don't have a ministry there anymore. You only have a handful of people. And I said the handful of people are still people that need Christ. Amen. There's still people that need encouragement. There's still people that need to know somebody cares. Yeah. Faithfulness. Amen. Faithfulness is what we are so lacking Right. amongst our people today. Mm -hmm. Have some backbone and stand up straight. Throw those shoulders back and say, I'm a soldier for Christ. Forward, onward we go, amen. Yeah. amen. No matter what the world says. Let's stand up straight for him, amen. Yes. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 15. 2 Timothy 3.15, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is for profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Get back in the word. Forget what Reader's Digest says. Don't listen to CNN and ABC, even Fox News. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You want truth? It's here. Amen. Glory to God. Don't let the world shape your thoughts and your views. Let the Word of God shape it. Amen. The great physician is checking your heart. He's checking your eyes. He's checking your ears. He's checking your walk. Are you walking out into the field of the harvest? Amen. Yeah. The Great Commission was not given to the Moose Lodge. Man. The Bullwinkles. The Elks Club. Or the Girl Scouts. Uh -huh. It was given to the local New Testament church. Man. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and spake unto said to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said in John 20, verse 21, and Jesus said unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Go into the highways and hedges. Compel them to come in. Amen. Yes. Be a help, be an encouragement. My life verse, my ministry verse, Jude 22, and if some have compassion, making a difference. Man. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Man. When's the last time you had compassion on somebody? When's the last time you tried to make a difference in somebody's life? Man. Well, every time I try to make a difference in somebody's life, they just go, I don't want it. We don't save people. It is our job to do the to go out and sow the seed. Yeah. 
Plant, water, let God bring the harvest. Yeah. I'm so glad I don't notch my Bible for souls that are saved. Yeah. But what I do do is thank God for opportunities to be a witness to people, to live Christ before them, to allow Bill Lyons to be dead and Christ to live and work through them. <coughs> whether I'm in the U.S. or whether I'm in Japan, I am to live for Christ. I am to go out into that harvest field that is so lacking. Yes people to do the harvest. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you. Jesus said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers into, my, into the harvest. Are you willing to go into that harvest field? The tracks that the church has. Grab some. Go to the grocery store. Hand it to the cashier. If they go, oh, it, 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 it's from your hand. Take some gloves, amen. <laughs> have some gloves with you, or have a, have a napkin that you can hand it to them so you're not personally touching it. Yeah. We had a, uh, a lady come to the church because she found one of our church tracks rolled up in the toilet paper roll on the base commissary bathroom. Uh. She says, we had just moved here, and I just... You know, I had to go to the bathroom at the commissary when we got groceries, and I pulled the roll of toilet paper out, and there's a track fell out. And huh. it, it had the name of the church, so we came to visit. Huh. You say, well, how can, can you do that? You sure can. Just don't do it on a Japanese airplane, because the Japanese will take and bring that track back to you because you forgot it in the bathroom. <laughs> Had that happened to us, amen. Uh, uh, they, they just, oh, you forgot this. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, but think of ways, just like our people, when people wouldn't take the tracks at the train station, one of the men said, let's just start putting them into the postal boxes. Get the seed out into the field. That seed does no good in the barn, amen. Yes. Let's get it out of the barn and let's get it planted into the soil of the heart. Let us walk in the field. And also let us walk with the people of God. Yeah. You know, the Bible tells us, and I'm done, in Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes. And so much the more. Right. I, I like food. We call them Baptist belly ships back in Japan. You know, when we get together for, for a, 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 what's the word, the, a carrion, I think is the word that some of them use. Some of them call it potluck and so forth. But we, we've gotten to the point since we have afternoon service instead of evening service, a lot of the people just bring food every Sunday and eat lunch and visit and fellowship and go off into a side room and take a nap and so forth until service time. But we're knitting together as a church family. Why? Because we feast together. Right. We share the word together. We're iron sharpening iron. So let me ask you a question tonight as I finish up here. How are you physically before the great physician? Is your heart soft and pliable or is it hard and stony because of the circumstances that you're going through? Are you letting Christ rule and reign in your heart? Mm -hmm. Are you letting the world control some things? How's your ears? Are you hearing? Open thy ears and let, let, let them hear what the word of God has to say. What are your eyes seeing? How's your walk? Are you walking like the world or are you walking like a soldier for Christ? Uh -huh. Let us run a good run, a good... Uh, I'm having one of those... I don't have all-timers, I have half-timers. I don't remember half the time. Um, <laughs> let's fight the good fight of faith, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be a good soldier for Christ. 
and let us run and not be weary. Yeah. Let us walk and not faint. Good. Let us take and allow the, the Lord himself to live, work, and shine through us that souls can be saved Amen. and lives can be changed. And we can make a difference in people's lives through these difficult days. God knows what's going on. And he's given each and every one of us opportunities to do a work for him. Yes. Let's stand with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. We're going to just have a quick hymn and invitation. God's dealt with you this, after, this evening. Why don't you come forward to the altar and do some business with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. The great physician. You got a problem, take it to him. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the world. Don't go to the psychology of the world. Take it to God. Yes. Who has all the answers. Mm -hmm. What are we going to sing, brother? 119. 119. Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be. And does he have your life today? Thank you, Brother Lyons from Japan. Appreciate that.